بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم The subject of fiqh and we have reached to issue uh, 1177 discussing about doubts about an act whose time of performance has passed. You know, if we doubt an act, but the time of doing it has already passed, what is the solution? Then we'll read it. You say, if a person doubts while offering prayers as to whether or not he has performed a particular obligatory act, like if he doubts whether or not he has recited Surah Al-Hamd, and if he has engaged himself in the next act, which he won't ha would not have intentionally performed in a normal circumstances, like reading the next Surah, he should ignore the doubt, but in a situation other than this, he should perform the act about which he doubts. You see, at time of the prayer, sometimes we doubt in an act before the time where we are there. For example, someone is in ruku'ah. Now, act of ruku'ah is different than act of qiyam, standing. He was standing, he recited Surah Al-Hamd and Qalu Allahu Ahad, for example, and then he went to ruku'ah. Now, at time of ruku'ah, he has doubt whether he recited Surah Al-Hamd or not whether he recited one surah after surah al-hamd or not. Now the time of that has passed. So he said here he should ignore the doubt. Or if he is in sujood, and then he has doubt whether he performed ruku' properly or not. Well, time of ruku' has passed. He is in a second act, that is sujood. So he should ignore that doubt. So if he has passed the place, he should ignore that, should not care for it. So that is one of the doubts that he should not care about them. We come to the second issue, issue 1178. If a person doubts while reciting a verse whether or not he has recited the preceding verse, or doubt while reciting the end part of a verse, whether or not he has recited its beginning, he should ignore his doubt. Well, you are in Surah Al-Hamd, you reached, for example, Ahdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim, and then you had doubt. Did you say after Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, or not? Now you are, you have passed that. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm Al-Din, Iyaka Na'budu, Iyaka Nasta'in, Ahdana Sarat Al-Mustaqim. So it's already, the time of that has passed. So you doubt the previous ayat. Or you are in Surah Inna Anzalna, or Qulu Allah Wahad. And you have doubt that you recited Surah Al-Hamd proper, means did you say, or you forgot that. So you have passed into another place. You say you ignore that doubt. That doubt has no value because you have passed its place. Issue 1179. If a person doubts after ruku or sajda, whether or not he has performed its obligatory parts, like dhikr and steadiness of the body, he should ignore his doubt. Now he finished his ruku'ah, he went to sujood. Now he has doubt, he did say full dhikr or part of it. At time of dhikr, was his body stable or his body was shaking, was unstable? So you see his doubt now has no value because he has already passed that. He finished two sajdas and he stand 
in Qiyam, and he has doubt whether dhikr of the sajda was right or not right, complete, incomplete. He put his hand properly to the floor or no, it was not proper. So all those have no value because already you have passed that situation. You are not in sujood. You have finished sujood, you standing up. So you will not care about the previous act if it is only doubt. Well, if you are sure, certain, 100%, something else. But here we are talking of doubt. Well, 50, 60, 70% that maybe I did not do it correctly. And maybe I did correctly. So you have doubt. So it's a, here the doubt should be ignored. Issue 1180, if while going into sajda a person doubts whether or not he has performed ruku'ah, or if he doubts whether he stood up after ruku'ah or not, he should ignore the doubt. So here again, while going to sajda, so he doubted whether he did ruku'ah properly or not. Now he has passed the ruku, and he is now going to sajda. So he said he should not care for the previous act. Issue 1181. If a person doubts while rising to stand whether or not he has performed sajda or tashahud, he should ignore the doubt. When he is rising, then means the previous stage has finished. So you doubt whether my sajda was a proper, whether my tashahud was a proper, complete, and con well, already he passed that, finished. When he passed, he will not care for the doubt in the past. Issue 1182, if a person who is offering prayers, sitting or lying, doubts at the time of reciting Surah Al-Hamd or Tasbihatul Arba'a, whether or not he has performed sajda or tashahud, he should ignore his doubt. And if the doubt occurs before reciting Surah Al-Hamd or Tasbihatul Arba'a, he should perform them. Now the case here, somebody who pray at time of sitting, not standing, or maybe lying, he is sick, they did operation for him, for example, and he is lying and he has to pray. Now, there is no proper sujood or ruku' or standing, you know. It's only he pointing out by his head. Sometimes even he cannot move his head, he pointing out by his eyes. You know, now if he has doubt, what will be his situation? He says, even here, if he shifted from one situation to another one, if he doubt about the previous one, he should not care about it. Except, he said, if he is, uh, the doubt happens before reciting. I mean, he said, for example, while lying, you know, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi Allahu Akbar, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la wa bihamdi Allahu Akbar. And now he is thinking to start, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah ar-Rahim. I mean, he's lying, not moving. He did not start, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then his, his standing did not happen. And he doubt that maybe he did one sajda, not two sajda, for example. So because he is still at the place. If he is healthy and he stand up, okay, that the place finished. But now he is not standing up. At the same place, only by mind he is shifting to standing. So he said, okay, he will do sujood, one more sajda, to make sure, to be certain that he did two proper sajda. And then, but if you start Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah ar and then he has doubt. Oh, did I did two sajda or one sajda? Maybe it was one ruku and one sajda, not two sajda. But already he started Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah. So then he will not care for his doubt. Though he is not moving, he is lying, for example, or maybe sitting on a chair. But he say he will not care for his doubt. Issue 1183. If a person doubts whether or not he has performed one of the rukun of a prayers, and if he has not yet engaged himself in the next act, he should perform it. 
For example, if he doubts before reciting Tishahud, whether or not he has performed two sajdas, he should perform them. And if he remembers later that he had already performed that rukun as an obligatory precaution, his prayer will become void because of additional rukun. Now we are talking about rukun. If you are in tashahud and two sajdas are rukun, you have not shifted to another rukun. Tashahud is not rukun, you are in tashahud. And you have doubt whether you performed two sajdas or not. Now, here you have to make sure to be certain and you have not passed the, the place of rukun. You are not in a second rukun. Not that you stood up, you made subhaniyat, and then you went to ruku'. Now in ruku', you doubted about that has passed from one rukun to another rukun. You don't care. But now you are still in the place of that rukun, that elementary part of the prayer, as we say. We say here you should go and do two sajdas, and then do tashahud. If later on you remember that already you made two sajdah and then because you did not have concentration, you had a doubt and then you made another two sajdah, then one rukun become additional. So here your prayer will be void. But if you did not remember later on that you did the two sajdahs, then your prayer is not void. You did not remember and you did perform your duty. If it was doubt about one sujda, I mean, you are sure, you are certain that you did one sujda. You are not sure you did the second one or not. After the first sujda, subhanahu rabbi ala wa bihamdi, you said, and you say, alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa la sharika la. Maybe it was like that, doubt. So he said, you do the rukun, complete the rukun by another sujda. But now if you remember it was additional because it was not intentionally, it, the prayer may not be void. So you see, these are about rukun, he say, elementary part of the prayer. Issue 1184, if a person doubts whether or not he has performed an act which is not a rukun of the prayer, and if he has not engaged himself in the following act, he should perform it. For example, if he doubts before reciting the other surah, whether or not he has recited Surah Al-Hamd, he should recite Hamd. And if he remembers after reciting Hamd that he had already recited it, his prayer will be in order because a rukun has not been added. Now here, about a full act, not part as he said before. Sometimes in Surah Al-Hamd, I am at the end of the ayah. As I said, I am in Ahdana Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, and I have doubt whether I said Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen or Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim or not. So you say, ignore it, because the time for that has passed. But now I say, غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الظالين I wanted to start, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, قل الله أحد I stopped. Then I remembered, where am I? Am I, am I after saying Allahu Akbar and I should recite Surah Al-Hamd? Or I have already recited Surah Al-Hamd, I should recite Qulu Allah Ahad. I had no concentration. Here, because you are standing, you are not indulged in another act. Still, place of Surah Al-Hamd as a whole is there. So you have to complete it. You have not shifted to another act. You are still in that act. So if you have doubt, you have not recited it, and maybe you read, you have read, you have recited only Takbiratul Ihram, Allahu Akbar, that's all. So you say, recite Surah Al-Hamd completely, and then go to Qul Allah, because we have to be certain about it. Now, if later on you remember that, well, your doubt had was not a proper, because already you have recited Surah Al-Hamd one time, and now you had a doubt, you recited a second time. Now here the prayer will not be void. Why? Because 
reciting Surah Al-Hamd is not an elementary part of the prayer. So if not elementary part, then it will not nullify the prayer. You see, five things are elementary parts of the prayer, and that is intention, takbiratul ihram, standing, the four ruku', one ruku', two sajda. So the qira'at of Surah Al-Hamd is not elementary part. So if it is added by mistake, will not nullify the prayer. Issue 1185, if a person doubts whether or not he has performed a rukun, like while in tashahud he doubt whether or not he has performed two sajda, and ignore his doubt, but remembers later that he had actually not performed that rukun, he should perform it if he had not entered into the next rukun. However, if he has engaged himself in the next rukun, his prayer is void. For example, if he remembers before rukun of the next rak'at that he had not performed two sajda, he should perform them. And if he has remembers his this during rukun or thereafter, his prayers are void. Now, what does he mean here? You say. He is in tashahud, for example. And he had doubt whether he performed two sajda or not. Now his duty is to make himself sure or certain about it, he should do. But he said, no, I think I did it. Though he has doubt, he was careless about his doubt. He stood up for the, let us say, third rak'at. And then he went to ruku. In ruku, his doubt changed into certainty. Now he becomes certain that he did not perform two sajda. He did only one sajda. So he did not complete the rukun. I mean, if it is two sajda, he did not do two sajda. Two sajda are rukun. One sajda is not rukun. If he did not do two sajda and he made sure, he's certain about it, not a doubt. He said, now it's too late to do it because he is in a second rukun, that is rukun. But if he was at time of standing and he remembered that, and later on, it was doubt at the beginning, but later on it shifted to certainty. So here he said, it at that time, he should sit, do two sajda, complete the rukun, and then do tashahud again and stand for tasbihat al arba'ah for third rak'at, and then he do rukun because what extra he did was not rukun and that will not invalid his prayer. His, his prayer will be all right. Okay, he might need sajda to sahu because of additional uh, tashahud and standing. That is something else, but, but the prayer itself is not void, is all right. Issue 1186, if a person doubts whether or not he has performed an act which is not a rukun, and if he is engaged in the next act, he should ignore his doubt. For example, if he doubts while reciting the other surah, whether or not he has recited Surah Al-Hamd, he should ignore his doubt. And if he remembers later that he had actually not performed that act, he should perform it if he has not entered into the next rukun. And if he has entered the next rukun, his prayers are in order. Based on this, if he remembers in Qunut that he has not recited Surah Al-Hamd, he should recite it. And if he remembers it in Ruku', his prayers are in order. Now here, not talking about rukun. The previous issue was about rukun. Here is about non-rukun part. He is in reciting surah Qulu Allah Wahad, and he had doubt. He, he is sure that surah Al-Hamd was not recited. He is certain about it. So he go 
and recite it in order to make himself certain about it. Even if he is in Qunut, in the second rakah, still he did not go to Ruku'a, which is an elementary part of Rukun part of the prayer. In Qunut, and well, he is sure now Surah Al-Hamd was not recited. Or the Surah was not, after Ghairil Maghdub alayhim al-Azzalin, he went to Qunut without reciting one full Surah. Well, it is obligatory to recite the Surah. So now he should break his qunut, recite the surah, and then do qunut again, and then go to ruku'ah. But if he is in ruku'ah, and now it's too late, he entered into rukun, elementary part of the prayer. He cannot break it. So he said now his prayer is in order, is okay. But then later on he mentioned he might need sajd sal for that. Issue 1187, if a person doubts whether or not he has said salam of a prayers when he is engaged in supplications or other uh, prayer, or when he form, or when the form of the prayer has already changed, he should ignore his doubt, and if he doubts before these acts, he should say salam, and if he doubts at any stage whether he recited the salam correctly or not, he should ignore that doubt. Now he's talking about the doubt after saying salam of the prayer. When he finished the shahud, and he say, As-salamu alayka yu an-nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, As-salamu alayna wa ala abadillahi salihin, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now because he had no concentration, he has not turned his face right and left in the back. He did not indulge in another prayer, whether nafile or obligatory prayer. He did not turn his face back or move out. Still he is sitting. And then he had doubt then he's still in salam, so he said he should recite the salam because he's still at that place. But if he turned his face to the back or stood up away and then the doubt came, now he only said that doubt should be ignored because already the time of salam of the prayer has finished. So after the time has finished, then the doubt has no value. So he said it depends on what situation you are. It is a time of salam before you turning your face or in be occupied with another prayer, then the time is there, he said you do it. If not, then your prayer is all right and you should not care for that doubt. The second type of doubt he said, doubt after the salam. Issue 1188. If a person becomes doubtful after the salam of the prayers as to whether or not he has offered the prayers correctly, like if he doubts whether or not he has performed the ruku' or doubts in a four rak'at prayers as to whether he has performed four or five rak'ats, he should ignore his doubt. But if both sides of the doubt lead to invalidity of the prayers, like if he doubt in a four rakat prayers whether he has performed three or five rakats, his prayers would be void. You know, after salam means the prayer has finished. Now, if he has doubt about the prayer, he should ignore that doubt. Whether he prayed three or four rakats, let us say in Dora prayer. So that is only doubt, he should not care about it. Whether his ruku or sujood was all right or not, he should not care about it. So already prayer has finished. But only in one situation, he said, if his doubt in both sides will invalidate the prayer. He doubt he either prayed three rak'at or five rak'at. Definitely either three or five. 
definitely means three, maybe, but three complete, not four. It was never four rak'at. So if it is a three, then his prayer is void. If it is five, again his prayer is void because one extra rukun added. In one rak'at there is ruku', there is two sajda, both are rukun. So both the ways he has missed or added one rukun. Said here his prayer is void. But if one part of the doubt is a prayer, I prayed four rak'at or maybe one more I did five, maybe five. Now his doubt has no value. We say, no, it is four. I'm finished. His prayer is all right. So was it five or six? Well, whether five is bottle, your prayer, whether six is bottle, so uh, here is bottle. But you say four or five, no, maybe it was four, and then his prayer is all right. come to the third part doubt after the time of prayer has passed issue 1189 if a person doubts after the time for prayers has already passed as to whether he has offered the prayers or not or if he suspects that he may not have offered it it is not necessary for him to offer that prayer if however he doubts before the expiry of the time for that prayer as to whether or not he has offered it, he should offer it, even if he has a feeling that he might have done it. You see here the doubt after time of the prayer has passed. Let us say time of Dhor and Asr prayer will pass when? By Maghrib, sunset. Now sunset is already there. He is praying Maghrib prayer. Now he had doubt. Did I pray Dhor and Asr today or not? So he ignored them. That doubt has no value. Because the time of it has been passed. You know. In the morning I doubt. Well, did I awake for morning prayer or not? I think I was awake. But I don't know. I am not sure. Time of morning prayer has passed. So he should ignore his doubt. He said, no, I, inshallah, I have a prayer. I'm finished. So he ignored his doubt. Why? Because the time has passed. But if there is still the time for that, because still there is time, he has to be certain he has fulfilled his religious duty. So if he had doubt, then he has to make sure and pray again. Suppose the time of Dhuhr, and Asr prayer start one o'clock afternoon, one p.m. And it is five p.m. Usually he pray on time. But today he forgot. I was busy. I don't remember. Did I pray at one o'clock? Or I was busy. I did not pray. There was still sunset. Let us say eight o'clock. So still there is time for the prayer. So here I should make sure that I prayed Dhuhr and Asr. I don't say that, well, no, I think I prayed. I think not sufficient. You have to be certain that you have prayed. If you are not certain, you should pray. Because still time is there, and you should pray. If it is Maghrib, as we said, no. Now the time has passed. The doubt has no value. Issue 1190. If a person doubts after the time of a prayer has passed, whether or not he has offered the prayer correctly, he should ignore his doubt. So now, his prayer, time of the prayer passed, he prayed Dhuhr, for example, or Asr, but he's not sure he prayed it correctly or not. Not about the prayer itself, about correctness of the prayer. He said, because the time has passed, so you should ignore it, ignore the doubt. Issue 1191, if after the prayer for Dhuhr and Asr prayers has passed, a person knows that he has offered four rak'at, but does not know whether it was with the intention of Dhuhr prayers or Asr prayers, he should offer 
four rak'ats of the intention of dhuhr prayers or asr prayers, uh, four rak'ats of qadha prayer with the niyat, niyat means intention that he is praying that which is obligatory upon him. Now it is time of Maghrib, time of dhuhr and asr has passed, and he knew he prayed only four rak'ats. He doesn't remember that four rak'at was dhuhr or that four rak'at was asr. Now the time has passed. So he said what he will do, he will perform four rak'at qadha and in his intention, O oh Allah, whatever is my duty, if my duty that this four to be dhuhr, then it is dhuhr. If my duty that it should be asr, then it is asr. Because I don't know what I have prayed. Was it dhuhr or asr? So Allah knows, and he said this four is whatever Allah knows, whether dhuhr or asr prayer. So that is, will be the intention. Issue 1192. If after the time of Maghrib and Isha prayers has elapsed, a person knows that he has offered one prayer, but does not know whether it was of three or four rakats, who should offer qadha of Maghrib and Isha prayers. Now, Dhur and As both are for four rakats. They are the same. So if you pray one of them, it will be sufficient, whatever is his duty that he initiated. Now here, Maghrib and Isha, and the time passed, it is morning, and he doubted well, that I have not prayed Maghrib and Isha. I prayed only one prayer. I don't know what was Maghrib or Isha. I don't remember. So he said he has to pray Maghrib and Isha because if you pray one, it will not be sufficient. If you pray three rak'at, then maybe it was Isha. If you pray four rak'at, maybe it was Maghrib. So he has to pray Maghrib, Qadha, Maghrib of Maghrib and Qadha of Isha prayers. Well, it is sufficient for today up to here, and inshallah we'll continue in the next session. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa alihi al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa ajjil farajahum